I'm on vacation every single day Cause I love my occupation Hey, 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 I'm on vacation If you don't like your life, then you should go and change it Hey, hey, I'm on vacation every single day Cause I love my occupation What's up guys? What's growing on? I bet you're wondering when is Pete going to get back from Costa Rica? When is Pete going to take us on another one of his installs? And uh, I'm here, finally. I'm feeling a little under the weather today. I actually ate something bad last night. I've had food poisoning all night and this is day one of the project. The last thing I wanted to do really was pick up the camera, but this is a really exciting site. Um, it's a two and a half acre site in Fort Myers, a really nice homestead. Um, the homeowner worked with actually somebody else on the design work and we're just installing this. So this is all floor tam, um, you know, lots of grass here, pretty much like your typical yard you'd find in Florida. Um, you know, we're turning this into a food forest. So something I'll show you all real quick. This is the front yard, the north. This is the house. This is the garage that's behind me, and this is the backyard where we're working now. So, um, you know, like I said, this is a, a really, a really exciting site. And some of the cool things here, um, you know, I'm going to let you all pan over my shoulder here in a second. And what I will tell you is, is this is not a nursery. Um, when I came out here to meet the homeowner, who is one of our subscribers actually from the YouTube channel, um, you know, he told me he had an addiction. He told me he had a problem, and that problem and that addiction was collecting plants. And if you look over here behind me, I mean, the most organized plant collection I think I've ever seen. All these plants have been stepped up properly a long time, so they're all in their proper size pots, and I really didn't even have to show up with a lot of materials. This is more or less a, a labor job for us. You know, we're not sourcing all of those fruit trees. Um, so the front yard is out over here this way, we're gonna have a kind of an understory here, area here behind the house. This will have some turmeric and malanga and taro and katuk and um, they have a lot of citrus. So another thing I'll point out is we're gonna take the citrus trees and we're gonna put them in this oak understory. So something I've mentioned to y'all before in my videos, you know, we've noticed something going on with the oak trees. We don't know if it's mycorrhizal or what the, you know exact cause of it is but we found a lot of citrus that's been unaffected in that understory of oak trees so even over here on this side um, a portion of this is what i brought but you know all these fruit trees all the ground covers on the bottom are us i mean all these big um, peach trees are already here look at them they're already loaded with peaches really nice shape to them there's another nice one um, some groomy chama lots of neat fruit trees here so like i said the homeowner already had purchased a large punt, you know, a large amount of fruit trees. He's been hand watering them and he's just been dying to get these things on the ground. So kind of been waiting on our guidance and assistance with this. So we're stepping into the backyard. And like I said, this is a two and a half acre site. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot growing on back here. So what we're starting to do now with that design I showed you is we're mar marking out all the main fruit trees. We're gonna actually cut sod out around where the trees are going. It's kind of giving us some demarcation um, a lot of those trees are 15, 25 gallon. They're only gonna be going in the ground about six inches. Something else I'll point out, this whole entire backyard is very low. So during the hurricane, you know, it held a lot of water out here in the backyard. So we are putting these trees in on mounds. 
So, you know, when they do get in the rainy season or when they do eventually have a hurricane, um, you know, those trees are going to be safe and protected. So they do dry out a little bit quicker being on a mound, but, you know, would I rather have trees die from being underwater? Or would I rather have trees that require a little bit more water being planted higher? So we are connecting to that native soil. We aren't planting, you know, completely up above it. So it should be okay, but we'll see. So I'm going to try to get you guys some drone footage. Um, this is all the fill dirt for the mounds, which is really just pure fill dirt. Very sandy, very well draining material. But look at all of these plants. I mean, we are not playing around here. So I got my man, Mr. Reese here today. He's, uh, he's definitely helping me big time this morning. I've been pretty much worthless myself. Um, like I said, I got food poisoning. I mean, I've been kind of sitting in the truck, laying on the cardboard, not my style, but you know, when you're down, you're down. So I, I didn't want to come today, but we've had it scheduled. We rented a house, kind of one of those things when you're the boss. You have to be here. There's nothing you can do about that. So I don't get the call in sick. I don't have anybody that'll take my position. So um, just kind of roughing it here today. I'm not complaining. It is what it is. So hope you guys are going to enjoy this kind of transformation. I think it's really cool because it's a completely floor tam yard. You know, we're going from floor tam to food forest. I mean, there will be a little grass left back here on the edges, but that's it. Got the tractors ready to go. There's some existing trees in the ground. Most of those are getting replanted they're going to come up a little higher nice collection of pineapples all the way along the back of the house tomatoes they even have some annual vegetables some bananas in the ground this is some of the older mulch so you know the homeowner started to source some mulch for the job um you know that's the key the key to saving money the key to success you know that hardwood mulch so i'll check back in with you guys later hold tight Hey guys, what's growing on? So it's another day here on this two and a half acre install in Fort Myers and show you guys what kind of progress we got. Um, we're expecting a large load of native plants this morning. Gonna be ordering the materials to get our irrigation in the ground, but we've got a lot of these berms set out. We've got a lot of the main fruit trees put out in place and something interesting I'll point out is, you know, we don't usually do installs with large trees. Um, a, they're expensive. B, they're harder to work with, you know, typically we're putting a lot of plants in the ground, so it's, you know, it's not very, you know, cost prohibitive to be putting large trees in the ground. And, you know, this project, because the homeowner had been, you know, had this intention and a dream of a food forest for a long time, had been collecting trees, potting trees up, you know, constantly stepping them up. There was almost a whole nursery here of large trees. So, you know, we're getting a lot of, I guess you could say, you know, real quick impact out here from these trees. I mean, that lychee right there is really good size. That's a big cercopia. Um, all the mangoes, I mean, even some of these mangoes have little mangoes on them. Quite incredible. Loquats, that was a three gallon, so they're a little bit smaller. And you guys are gonna see here, you're gonna see all different colors in these soil profiles. And I'll tell you what we have going on. And these are those little baby mangoes. So if you look here at the ground, we requested fill dirt. We wanted anything as close as we can get to the native soil. Came in a little bit more clay than we like. So what we ended up doing was, you know, we've put berms in for every single bed. And we have that soil that has the clay as the main build. And then up around the trees, you can see that white soil. That's just sand. That's like beach sand. The black stuff you're seeing on top is biochar. And we've also put a little bit of azomite on there. Um, and I also think they put the organic fertilizer, so the sustain. So there's biochar, there's going to be compost, there's fertilizer, there's azomite, and sand. And something I'll point out is, and I've said it multiple times, mangoes do not like fertilizer. Mangoes do not like organic matter. Mangoes thrive on neglect. Um, you know, they do like some micro and macronutrients. They hate nitrogen. Um, just absolutely hate it. They won't even fruit because of it. Constantly keeps them in that vegetative state. So. Um, they kind of, they tend to thrive on, you know, stress in my experience. 
So we are not putting those in big holes of compost. The only thing that got amended with compost at the top of the plant were the bananas and the figs, nematode problems, um, heavy feeders. So, you know, things like the Japotacabas, they even got put in sand. I mean, you know, here's one right here. Check this out. This is a, um, I believe this is a Fuji or a Spicata coconut. And you can see, I mean, look at the nut at the bottom of the tree. So that nut from the coconut is the seed, you know, on Caribbean islands, those coconuts fall in the water, they float to another island, they sprout. I mean, they grow in pure sugar sand, so we add sand. You know, those don't grow in black muck, organic matter, compost, anything like that. So obviously everybody knows, you know, coconuts are great, but you know, there are species that don't require a lot of organic matter. Um, you guys would not believe the amount of mangoes out here. I'm gonna point over this kind of space one more time and you can kind of see, so that's like a small access path going through there. These are smaller paths going through the center where that large pile of mulch is. That's actually supposed to be a gazebo. I believe this is even a fruit punch mango. Look at these little cuties. Little baby mangoes all over all the mangoes out here. So, like I said, good sized trees. You know, and something I'll point out to y'all, this is what we want to see when we put a fruit tree in the ground. Do y'all see that, that little club foot, you know, where that tree is larger at the bottom. It's very important that that is up out of the ground. Another thing I'll point out, we do not normally plant citrus. Um, there was a lot of citrus purchased, a lot of citrus on the design. We're planting it, doing everything we can to, you know, hopefully keep those plants healthy and strong and avoid that greening kind of tough um, you know obviously we're gonna have a compost tea regimen out here all types of micro and macro nutrients but there's no guarantee so the citrus is probably the most experimental thing going in out here um, most of these pathways are actually gonna be done in some type of gravel or rock because we had mentioned before this is a very very soft space um, by soft I mean it gets really mushy gets really wet and rainy season um, during the hurricane last year this held a lot of water so that's why these trees are up on berms I mean this is not just an aesthetic thing. This isn't just because it looks cool uh, or just because we like to spend money. This is actually very functional, getting these trees up. So if we do have water back here for an extended period of time, these trees are high, they're gonna thrive. They're not gonna die by sitting in the wet feet. Even though mangoes can handle a little bit of wet feet. A couple of bananas going on over here. And um, you guys can see we we're up and at it. I'm gonna get the drone out soon and I'll show you guys a little more what's going on by the end of the day. Here's some more of those mangoes. What's up guys, what's growing on? So we had an exciting delivery yesterday. Some of our native plants started to show up and I'm just gonna walk you guys around, show you what we got. So behind me here, I had a large order. The red flowering is the tropical sage and muley grass, um, black-eyed Susans, Gallardia, um, goldenrod. We have some uh, Coral honeysuckle, which is looking a little small right now. That's the coral honeysuckle, no flowers yet. That's the uh, native Simpson stopper, um, uh, white scorpion tails, a little bit more scorpion tail kind of hiding over there in the back. But this is that tropical sage. There's probably, ooh, I don't know, I think 864 inch mimosa. You can see those beautiful little flowers. Let's get you up in there. Boom, that new Sony is on point. Um, these are all the one gallon Fakahatchee grass. And I've got two varieties of firebush. This more red variety, these are both native. This is the Compacta, and this is the regular Hamelia Patens. So these are both the large varieties. Neither of these are the dwarf. 
Um, and that's just a good chunk of native stuff that we're putting in over here. We've really thinned out the original plants that were here from the homeowner. Um, you know, really dented that nursery garden that was over here behind the house. Um, probably got, you know, 80 of those 20 to 40 gallon trees in the ground. A lot of big plants, you know, something we're not used to planting because we normally plant small trees. So this morning here, we're waiting on a couple more loads of fill dirt. Um, they're also bringing us a couple loads of mulch. We've got a trencher running. We're getting irrigation lines in the ground. We have to get those main lines in before we can start putting any of that mulch down. So, you know, this is kind of that final rough in step. And then boom, we'll start laying the mulch in the beds. We'll start working on the pathways. You know, we've got all of our hard lines laid in. We just have our soft lines to do inside those raised beds or lump beds or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I guess they're more of a lump bed or a mound because of the way we've built them up there with the native soil and the sand. So I'll show you guys the site a little bit and I got to get back to work. So hold tight. Oh, it's this guy. Hey, good morning. How's it going? What are you doing? I'm laying out path. Hey, you got flags. You kind of look important. I am important. You're important? <laughs> hey, what's ripening? <laughs> Coming at you right Coming now. Coming at you right now. <laughs> hey. Yep, it's that guy from Costa Rica. It's him again. What are we going to do with him? I don't know. Can't get rid of me that easy. Can't get rid of him. He's got his tractor. He's here. We're having fun. Watch out. So, obviously, you know, we bring in the pros when we're doing serious stuff here. And uh, Matt helped us out here with the design, um, layout. You know, he's an engineer, so laying out all these paths, getting all these beds marked out has been a, a task in itself. Quite the undertaking just in that demarcation process. So, excuse the sound of the trencher, but this is my shot to use the camera. So, I'll try to stay close and keep you all... You know, good audio here. So we've laid out yesterday all the three gallon materials. So the only thing I have left to go in would be four inch and one inch plants. And I'll kind of just talk about what we put in the site. Um, that right there is a sweet almond. This over there is one of those compactas. Right here is one of those coral beans. I have one that has a beautiful flower. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Caliandra. This is a uh, South Florida persimmon. Compacta, obviously mangoes, those were here. Nitrogen fixing wax myrtle, uh, another persimmon, I think that's a Fuyu. That was a uh, ornamental plant that was here. Some type of penta that the homeowner had. Um, citrus, firebush. And you guys can see, you know, I know you're wondering, like, look at all these different soil profiles. And something I'll point out. I know this is common practice, um, making a ring around a tree like this. That is not really common practice for us. Um, that's only something that's been temporarily done here in the early stages of the project. And that's specifically being done to kind of just hold that water around the tree because we have just sand on the site. We don't have any you know, mulch down on the ground yet. We don't have that sponge to actually retain that water. So you know, when the guys are hand watering these plants, you know, they've been in pots for a while, they're getting pulled out of the pots, some of them are getting root pruned. There's a little bit of a shock, you know, taking it from the pot, putting it into the ground. Um, you know, the tree stresses a little bit. So you know, a lot of these trees were holding stress and a lot of these trees were having a hard time holding water because of being on this hill, um, because not no mulch being there to retain the moisture. So we, you know, we built temporary little berms to just kind of, you know, reservoir and hold the water for the first couple of days. As we put the mulch in, those are gonna kind of get knocked down. That's not something I typically do long-term practice with the donut. Although I know it's commonly done in the landscape industry, it's just not our style. Um, so we talked to the homeowner last night and this was originally all coming out. Um, you know, when you really look at the scale of this project, I mean, this is a big property. You know, the main house is over that way, the garage is over this way. Um, we have a big path going into the front yard, more landscape out there. I mean, this is two and a half acres. And, you know, as, as much as I like to create edible gardens, edible landscapes, rip out grass, you know, something that I will point out is grass is very cheap to maintain. Um, you know, it takes a couple of minutes to run it over with the lawnmower. Um, pulling weeds is very labor intensive. You know, if we're trying to have an organic garden here, uh, no herbicides, things like that, you know, we're gonna be out here hand pulling weeds. Uh, we're gonna be planting obviously lots of ground covers, lots of things to suppress the weeds. You know, like I've said before, plant the weeds you want or you're gonna get the weeds you don't want. But what I'm really trying to get at here is, 
it's very cheap to maintain grass and to just take and put two foot of mulch all over this entire outside border I believe would have been a, ma a, a maintenance nightmare um, but you know if he really you know gets a hold of this gets this thing in the grasp you know it's not too much for him to handle fine you know let's go ahead and start taking these outer edges but I, I felt that to just go ahead and remove all the grass throughout this entire backyard would be a huge maintenance undertaking for anybody. I mean, we're talking about a lot of work. So we're leaving the grass on the outsides of the beds. There's gonna be a, um, a trellis area up there just past that mulch pile, a um, couple of coconuts, wax myrtle, a couple of sugar apples, um, large black sapote kind of back here in this corner bed. So where you see the stakes, those are the big trees. Um, the flags are kind of marking the front of the bed. This will be a big raised bed kind of just going through that corner. And there's a jujube over there and another sugar apple. So there's a, you know, a few trees just back here in this bed. There's, there's six trees in this corner bed. So, you know, there is a, another bed over here. The back other corner over here was supposed to be a chicken area. There's also a designated bee area. And then that other far west side is that mulch drop off area. So that's long term. Um, you know, that always is going to be mulch because it's constantly going to have fresh mulch dumped on it. The weeds aren't going to be a problem. You know, it'll probably be a foot, two foot thick, something like that. So we're not really too concerned over there in that area. But we're here, um, we're getting there. This is the 10 foot path, which we call like the giant horseshoe that kind of follows throughout the entire design, goes all the way out into the front yard. And then we have more of these interspersant paths that are more walk paths or, you know, this one is eight foot, 10 foot. It does cut up to the main gazebo. So this is a gazebo right here. This is a 10 foot path that's gonna have a giant cattle paddle tunnel. So we're gonna have like a, a 40 foot tunnel right behind me, about 10 foot tall with cattle panels, um, probably big six by six cypress posts, kind of like we did for Jubilee with passion fruit growing over it. It'll kind of walk up in to wherever there's a gazebo at the end, whether it be a cheeky hut, whatever type of, something that's gonna draw you to the center of the garden, you know? And this is another one, you know, we're in Alva right now, we're in Fort Myers, but we're gonna feel like we're in you know, Central America, who knows, Costa Rica, by the time these bananas start growing in, by the time these coconuts start growing in. That's the idea, we wanna give that feel of being in a different space, so. I know that trencher's annoying me, I know that trencher's annoying you. Um, something I'll point out too, I mean like, we didn't realize it was in the ground here, you know, and when you're doing jobs like this, you're always running into unexpected, you know, consequences, and one of the unexpected consequences here is the ground, I've never seen more debris in my life. Um, you know, there's rock like I think stuff was just dumped here I don't know if it was when they did the actual construction. I don't know if a house was knocked down and Demolished and buried in the backyard, but there's definitely a lot of stuff back here in the ground It's making difficult um, to run the trencher this morning. It's not making our lives easy. Sometimes it's quick Sometimes it's hard. You never know what you're gonna get yourself into and I think that's the point I wanted to point out, you know Be careful when you're bidding these projects and these jobs, you know you, you don't know everything. There's a lot of unexpected things that come on, you know, just like whoever designed this. Like I said, we didn't design this, you know. We're installing this, you know, so it's completely different from the person that had that idea and that concept and that thing that he put down on paper to the person that actually comes out here and puts it in the ground. You know, things get a little bit different on the ground. You know, things change a little bit on the ground. There's a lot of field adjustments going on. So we're trying to do everything to stay as close to the original design as possible, but there's been a couple of changes, you know, and I think it's flowing really well, so. You can see we've got a nice grade rake over here. They're just kind of finished smoothing out some of the berms. Some of them are getting the three gallons planted. This is a banana pit, um, citrus area. A lot of citrus in this space. There's Montinga here. There's mulberries here. There is a couple of uh, couple of mangoes. I see a peach. I see a pomegranate. I see a lychee. I see moringa. This is the moringa right here. And another beautiful looking firebush. And let's check out this pomegranate.
what's up guys so what's growing on it's another day here in Fort Myers and living the dream kind of getting her done out here it's Friday I get to go home and uh, see my family today so I'm extremely excited about that i um, gonna be leaving a little bit early hopefully beating traffic and having dinner at uh, home tonight so not out on the road so I figured I'd give you guys a progress update we just got done flushing irrigation or sheet mulch and some paths and uh, looking a little bit different out here. Let me turn you around. So something I'll immediately point out is we've got this large pile of mulch right here and uh, that large pile of mulch is what I'm calling the cheese and it, it just smells like almost bad cheese per se and you know something I'd like to point out I always tell you all that tree mulch is probably the best stuff you can get and that stuff from the oak trees with the leaves and the twigs and all that stuff broken down in there is gold. Well, only around the trees do we have enough of that gold to kind of go around where we're located. It's very hard to get tree mulch. It's very expensive to get tree mulch. So this is actually a, a byproduct of the good mulch. So there's a local uh, organic compost facility and when they make that compost and they screen that old mulch, this is all that, you know, big woody material that doesn't go through the screening process that kind of almost pure carbon. So it's not ideal. It's got garbage in it, doesn't smell great, but it's working for that general area. So if we had to, you know, buy mulch for the entire site, you know, that would have, it, it would have been, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, this was very cheap. Um, you know, it's kind of filling the gap. It's not ideal, but it works. You know, you got to use what you can get. You got to use what's affordable. I mean, not everybody has a, a bottomless budget and that's understandable. So, you know, the cheese is going to work for the general areas of the bed. The primo stuff is kind of going around the fruit trees. And what we've done now is we have all the main fruit trees in the ground. We've got all the three gallon support plants in the ground. And we're going to come back after we do the heavy mulch and install all the one gallon plants and all the four inch plants. It's much easier to put those in through the thick mulch than try to put those in and go around those with the mulch. You'll end up losing them, especially like four inch mimosa. They just disappear. Um, they'll get buried. So we fit, we found, and this is just from experience, that it's much easier to do this down the road. And you can do it any way you like. I'm just sharing with you what works best for us. So let me show you around the site, show you what's growing on out here. Now this is a no small site, at least about an acre and a quarter. There's a lot of space here. Lots of pineapples, lots of mangoes. I mean, the, the mangoes have baby mangoes on them. The peaches have fruit on them. Pretty amazing. The pineapples have pineapples on them. This is a Caliandra. This is a Grumi Chama. Like I said, the peach is just covered in fruit. Star fruit. Uh, variegated citrus, another peach. But hey, look at this stuff. So where I'm standing is actually going to be one of the hard paths on the site. Like I had showed you in the design, we have a large horseshoe going around the outside. And it's kind of a cut through path that I'm standing in. So this is going to be some type of hard base, whether it be rock, whatever it may be, some type of hard fill. Everything else is going to have mulch paths or grass around the outside. So this inner region, you know, where we have all these smaller paths, um, the homeowner actually took the time and took all the tape and the staples out of a bunch of cardboard. So we're sheet mulching those paths actually before we put down any mulch. And you know, something I'll point out, it's not very common, but you know, I didn't see a lot of invasive weeds on this site. I didn't see any torpedo grass. I didn't see any uh, Bermuda grass. I didn't see any nuts edge, which is very rare. Um, you know, those are usually the really bad ones. It's mostly Floritan back here or St. Augustine. That's not something I really have to worry about penetrating. So, you know, the, the actual weed species that's already present here on the site isn't a problem. You know, that's not usually common. You can see, I mean, these are 25, 45 gallon mango trees. It's a uh, pineapple guava, lychee, grafted loquat. It's got fruit hanging on the bottom. You guys can see that down there. There's another one of those coral trees. I mean, look at these mangoes. Just loaded. So right here, I'm kind of standing in the center of the site where that pole is. That's actually gonna be a cheeky hut, a pavilion, a cabana, some type of destination. About halfway there with the sheet mulching process. And we've got moringas and bananas. Here's that coral tree I was talking about yesterday. Erythrina, this is a native nitrogen fixer. 
beautiful flowers, tracks hummingbirds. It has those long tubular flowers on it, pretty cool. Red Jipotacaba, Moringa, kind of a sad looking lychee, another Caliandra. Here's a uh, pink Barbie guava. Looks like a sweet almond. Um, dwarf everbearing mulberry covered in fruit. As you can see, ripe and red fruit. Coconuts. There's a little bit more of that cheese mulch. Um, strawberry tree, Montinga. There's actually a dwarf pomegranate over there. But most of our Poly lines are ran, admitters are on the fruit trees. Oh hey Ryan, how you doing? Good. You're getting after it over here. Doing a good job, Ryan. Thank you, sir. There's another one of those giant mangoes. And here we go. That's a pretty sad looking mango. So something I'll point out here. You know, there was a bunch of mangoes actually already in the ground when we got here. We've had to, you know, take them out of the ground. Anytime you remove a certain amount of roots you have to take a certain amount of green growth off and I was trying to avoid doing that with those because they were covered in little baby mangoes and I know the homeowner had his, kind of his heart set on getting those this year and unfortunately I had to top them out um, just to kind of stop them from stressing so they're still alive they're gonna do fine they're gonna drop what leaves are left to reflush um, a couple of them really had some bad branching and bad shaping anyway so kind of you know, now that I've pruned them down lower, I'm able to get them to branch a little bit lower. So it's not a bad thing at all, but it had to be done. There's some peaches up in here, another moringa, some more bananas. All right, here's the very back bed. This is the southeast corner. And we just finished this one up and this one, you know, just got the fill dirt, um, sugar apple, jujubes, Coconuts. Oh, hey, Ian, how you doing? Oh, hey. Hey, what's growing on over here? Got some, got some stuff going in. Yeah, you putting some plants in the ground? Oh, you know it. What's this big boy in the back? Is that a black sapote? Black sapote? Whoa. Whoa. Look at those flowers. They are just gorgeous. So, this is what comes in the cheese. This is why we're not very excited about it. Get that and trash and all kinds of weird stuff kind of just showing up in there. Got some more sugar apples, wax myrtle, um, pineapples, sugar apple, banana. So lots of mixed species growing on out here. Look at these, look at these mangoes. Unbelievable. Not something that we are accustomed to dealing with out here. We typically plant small trees because of how many plants we put in the ground. It would just be too expensive. So this is that main path going to the, um, like I said, Cheeky Hut, Gazebo area, whatever that turns out to be. So sheet mulching and I need to get back to work. So I just wanted to show you guys around. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, exciting project. And I don't know if we're gonna make it to the front yard, but our goal is to get berms in the front yard next week, finish planting the support plants, get some more zones in. We'll see, we're plugging away, we're trying our best. So thank you all for watching. Thank you guys for your support. Don't forget, like, subscribe. Most importantly, pound dirt.